Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Gordon. I'm an entertainer here at IT Pro TV, and I'm your host for this series. In this episode, we're going to focus on your profile. That's right, I said you and your profile, meaning the collection of settings and abilities you have in Teams to make Teams, well, more personal for you. Join me here. Let me show you what I mean. When we take a look at Teams, it may not be obvious where your profile is because as we look at our navigation bar, you don't really see an area that says, hey, click me to customize Teams and make it look more like what you want it to look like. But we do, we just don't realize it's there. Let me zoom in and show you what I mean. Over here, as we move through our navigation elements, and we've been through many of these in the episodes already, we see all sorts of stuff. And a lot of people sometimes think, well, I'll go to help. Maybe that's where I'll find my profile. We don't find it there. Where we actually find it, believe it or not, is by looking for our picture for our profile, which in my case is the little black cat on the black background here, and looking for that so that I can click on it and I can begin to access settings unique to me and my experience. Now, it's not gonna be found here on my posts tab in my message flow. That just happens to be one place where it is. And that does pop out the contact card that shows who I am. But what we want is our picture right up at the top on the right here. I'm gonna zoom over so you can see it. At the upper right-hand corner right here, when I click on this one, you can see that I have all sorts of options and capabilities here about shortcuts and signing out and updates and status and all that stuff. And that's where we can go to access our profile and begin to change things. You may wanna put a picture in for yourself as opposed to the generic square with your initials and you can do that by clicking change picture right up under your name and browse and find a picture for yourself. If your organization has a standard for that kind of stuff, check with them to make sure it's okay before you do that. We clearly don't, or I wouldn't have a black hat on a black background as my icon, right? And then under available, that's really just my current status in Teams. Am I available and interacting with people? Do I wanna be labeled as appearing away so I can work without being disturbed? Things like that. You can see all of them are there. And if you need to reset your status for some reason, there is a reset status option at the bottom. I could set a status message. That will be a message people will get. Uh, so that way, when they go to take a look at my status and see do not disturb or whatever, this may give them an indicator that I'm going to be busy for the next three hours on a deadline. But if they do need me, perhaps they can instant message me or they can come by my office or whatever I want to type. I do see at the bottom right-hand corner a number, and that number indicates the number of characters I have left as I type this message. I can also use the at sign to mention somebody in my status. So I might type in, at Wes Bryan is covering for me while I am in this meeting. And of course, I would want to try to type that and spelled correctly. And you'll notice that number went down from 280 to 222 as I've been typing. So I could set that and then I can show when people message me, say set that up as well and show it to them and clear status message after. And I can set this and I can set it for a period of time if I'm going to be out of the office, maybe for this entire week and click done. And so when I've done that, I've now set my status message. It is right there and it will be displayed until whatever time I specified, and I can edit that and or I can delete it if I choose to. So this is one way you can customize your profile and make it more personal, but also more valuable for you as you interact with others or they need to interact with you. I can also go in and look at settings. And under settings, I have quite a number of things that allow me to personalize the team's experience get asked a lot about how we modify the background and the themes. I prefer a dark theme traditionally. We don't use it when we're filming episodes and showing you things. It's sometimes hard for you to see certain things. But when I work with teams personally, I use a dark theme. And I can easily change that just by highlighting right here. And when I do that, you can see it changes immediately. Don't even need to hit save. If I want to put it back, just put it back. You'll see I can also specify, and we get asked about this a lot, how do I have Teams start up automatically? Well, it actually starts automatically, as you could see by default, but I can stop it from doing that if I want to. I could open it in the background. I can close and keep the app running as I do so it's running in my task tray. I can go ahead and register Teams as the chat app for Office, which means now if anybody tries to chat with any of the Office apps, Teams will be the default. 
I could also change the default language of Teams, as you can see, and the keyboard layout for those of you that may be using Teams in a different language. There's all sorts of languages supported, and if you have to move back and forth between them, you could see that it's easy to do that. Some of these changes may require you restarting Teams, just so you know. Under privacy, I could set do not disturb and manage priority access for people that may have the ability to disturb me, even though I'm not supposed to be disturbed, maybe my direct boss or maybe our IT support team if they need me or something like that, or members of your team. And you can manage priority access by clicking here and then setting this. We could still receive notifications, calls, chats, things like that, but you have to list people. So I would say at and I would say IT Pro TV 4 is gonna be one of those people as you can see. And so now that I've gone ahead and I've put them in, go back to settings and you'll see that they are now there on that list and they are gonna be in a special priority queue that lets them interrupt me even if I've set myself to do not disturb. I can specify that I wanna opt in to read or have read receipts used and participate in surveys. Can opt out of those just by Click in here and turn in those on and off as needed. Again, these settings take place right away. No need to click save or anything like that. Under notifications, this is one that's very popular. A lot of people want to know about this. How do I control for notifications and how do I set what kind of notifications I will receive, if any at all? And I can come in each individual area here and I can kind of pull down and set notifications in all of these places, whatever they may be. And as I zoom out, you'll see there's quite a long list, as well as status notifications right down at the bottom. This one often gets missed because it's all the way down there. Follow a person's status and get notified when they appear available or offline. If I'm trying to connect with somebody, get their attention, and maybe I'm not having a lot of luck, I can manage notifications for that. And I can, again, add people in here, people that I want to track, let's say Cherokee Jones, and you'll see now I get a notification that she is offline and that's gonna keep popping up and that may or may not be what I want. So if I decide after a while, you know what, that's kind of annoying, I could turn that off and just remove her or anybody I put in there from the list and I don't have to worry about it. Devices, I can go in and I can set up any audio devices I may be using, a headset for instance, things like that. I can make a test call and check the audio. I can also take a look at permissions and specify whether I want to allow the uh, location where I'm at to be made available, whether I want to use the media, the camera, the microphone, the speakers, things like that, and give them permission so that they can interact with other areas. And under calls, I can go in and I can specify how I want my calls that come in to be handled if I'm not available. This is also a very important uh, capability and attribute of your profile that you could specify. You can have calls ring you, but you can also specify that they are forwarded, and you could specify where you want to forward them, in this case to your voicemail. You could set voicemail up, or you could say calls ring me, and if unanswered, then do nothing or go to voicemail. And so I have control here over how that's going to happen and what is the amount of time we want that ringing to be before we redirect. The default is 20 seconds. Maybe you want it to be a little bit less or a little bit more, depending on whether you know you're just out of the office and you know for a fact you're never going to pick up, so you might as well just make it really short. And you'll also notice here, and go all the way down to one minute, even though I didn't show that to you when I was first in there. You could also specify a ringtone for incoming calls. We do have several of them available, quite a number actually. And you can choose and then you can kind of hear it testing in the background very low there, so you can tell what it looks like, sounds like, before you actually use it. And for those of us that may have a special need with accessibility requirements, we can turn on the TTY mode if we need to right from here as well, so that's good to know. And just zoom out. Again, no save button, no click to activate, no OK. Just set it and forget it, as they say. So any and all of these things are available to us from within our profile, all elements we can go in, we can actually modify. Now, one other thing I do want to show you just as we get ready to wrap up, I'm going to come back down here and we can go to keyboard shortcuts. Yet another area which is very important and interesting that we can benefit from. And we have keyboard shortcuts 
uh, for the language keyboard layout. Again, if you change the language, change keyboard layout, they will appear localized in whatever language you may be wanting to use. So rest assured that will update, so to speak, based on the keyboard layout. But if you're not familiar with some of the shortcuts that can be used, you can come in here and you can see what they are. If I want to go to search, it looks like control and the letter E is going to be the keyboard shortcut for that. If I want to open settings, control and period is going to let me do that. Control shift and F for filter. So let's try one of these, right? Control E for search. Let's get out of here. Let's hit control and the letter E. And sure enough, what just happened up top? Looks like search activated, right? Pretty straightforward. Escape was the keyboard shortcut to get out of there. What about control period? That opens our keyboard shortcuts to allow us to be able to see what they are via opening settings, opens up where we were before we closed, and you could see they are working. So definitely check out the keyboard shortcut shortcut page, because this is gonna give you a lot of capabilities. Now at the bottom of this, by the way, I'm just gonna highlight it down here. You could see shortcuts, not just for Teams, but a link to shortcuts for all platforms as well as the Accessibility Center. If you are a person that does have some sort of accessibility requirement, definitely take advantage of this and make sure you understand how to set teams up in any of the programs you're using so that you can be maximally effective, but you also can work comfortably. And there are links that allow you to do that here with no trouble at all. As we continue our conversations in this series, I'll be continuing to bring you additional episodes that hopefully make you more productive and make you more team friendly. But until then, until I come back with another episode, happy teaming. Check out the playlist for more Microsoft Teams tips and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Adam Gordon, and thanks for watching.